Hey Camping Nation, welcome back. This week we're talking about battery cutoff switch. What is it? Where is it? What does it do? Why don't I have one? And how can I install one? We'll be right back. Thank you for tuning back in. So like I said, we're going over the switch. What is it? Why do you need it? Why don't you have one? This, that, and the other. So what this is, anybody who's ever dropped off their camper in storage and come back two weeks later, found a dead battery. Every time, unless you disconnected it. This switch disconnects the battery. It's a battery cutoff switch. Throughout the camper, there's little things that put a load on the battery. It takes amperage, even while it's not being used. Stuff like the presets on the radio, the little lights on the radio. There's the, what is that, the uh, carbon monoxide detector, and then a million other things. If you have a phone charger plugged into the 12 volt system, it will slowly drain the battery. Now, of course, a battery will drain on its own disconnected, but it doesn't do it in a week. So with this battery disconnect switch, you don't have to disconnect the battery. Physically, you don't have to disconnect it. You don't have to remove a battery cable. It's as easy as flipping a switch. So that's why you need one. Personally, I've never felt that I needed one because I always remove the battery when I take it to storage unless I was in a hurry and I knew I was going to be back soon and ended up not coming back soon and come back to a dead battery. That happened this year. Then also when I took it to the dealership and left it there for two, maybe three weeks, I come back to pick it up. Battery was dead. And on top of that, both of these times, I had to tow it home with zero charge on the battery because my truck isn't charging the battery. That's going to be another episode. There's a good reason to have it. You don't, you're not always going to be able to disconnect the battery. You're not always going to be able to take the battery with you. Um, why do I take the battery with me? In storage, stuff like batteries grow legs and walk. And that's $120, $150 for just a decent one. So if I remove it, it won't walk away. Where is this switch? You'll find it possibly in multiple places in the camper or on the camper. One of the places will be right up here. On the control panel, frequently right by the front door. Some models will have a wet bay. Inside of a storage box, you'll have a panel right here. And on that panel, you'll have all of your freshwater tank fill and you'll probably have some of the others like the city water and all that and then there'll be some switches in here also and among those switches frequently would be the shutoff switch for the battery you'll also have that on fifth wheels now on some of the lower end units and i don't mean lower end like junk i just mean some of your lower cost units you'll be more likely to have a switch right up in here somewhere and that's going to be the cheapest way to do it and that's the way that we're going to do it the why doesn't my camper have a shutoff switch it comes down to cost even though this is only three dollars wholesale for a cheap one you still have to pay somebody to put it in plus why give it to you when they could charge you 50 bucks for this as an option and actually probably more like 75 or 100 dollars for it for the option and they'll pay three dollars for the piece um, 50 or whatever for the one hour labor to install it and then 50% markup for profits. However, most people don't order their RVs. They get what's on the lot. So they just don't put it on there because of cost. It's another way to keep cost down of your rig because when it boils down to it, we do a lot of our shopping with our wallet. Well, this is something that if you're ordering a rig this is a good thing to get again a lot of your higher end rigs will have it already 
but most of the lower cost ones do not. This is our second camper. It's not one of the cheaper ones, and surprisingly, it does not have one. Now, our first one, our Springdale, it was a cheap camper, low cost camper. It's actually very well built, and it didn't have one either. Now, I removed all the tanks and everything here just so that we can have some room here. You don't need to do that, but then you'd be working this much space, so it's still, it's a good idea to remove them. Now, you'll see arguments on where, what system to cut into. An automotive or a truck mechanic will tell you to cut into the negative, the ground. And on a car, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, NHRA regulations would tell you you're wrong. But on a camper, cut into the positive side of the circuit. There are some good reasons, but I don't want to make it too complicated. Just know that it's better to cut into the positive circuit and have the cutoff on the positive circuit. So now, come on. <laughs> positive cable goes into this circuit breaker right here. This is where we're gonna be working from. I've already unplugged it from the power in the garage. So once I disconnect this, it will be no longer a hot system. All you have to do is disconnect one. You don't need to disconnect both to have a unplugged system. All this switch does, look at it, you got on, off, and out. So, I mean, literally all, it's just a switch. So all you really need to do is have a wire going from the battery to the switch, and then from the switch to the system. And this circuit breaker right here is going to be the system. Now, some people will just mount this on the battery box. The plastic battery box, usually on the lid. And you know, that works. I would rather see it mounted on the camper. And this front wall right here is, literally, it is the best place. The only problem is, is that there is this underbelly underneath, and it prevents you from getting up in here and really getting behind here. The tools needed for this is not that, not that extreme. You'll need some wire. I don't know my wire gauge. Yeah, the lettering is far gone on this. And the factory one, I can't tell what the writing says. It's got some writing on there. I don't have my glasses. So it's thick without being battery cable, like automotive battery cable. Again, I don't know my gauges. The bigger the number, the smaller the wire. The smaller the number, the bigger the wire. Makes sense, huh? I'm sure somebody in their comments will tell me what gauge this is. Now this is just something I have left over from a truck I probably parted out 20 years ago. I don't throw stuff away. We've already, we've already determined that. This is just an added bonus. I'm expecting not to do a crimp on. Probably. Maybe not. So, you need wire. You need crimp on connectors. I've got a whole box of them over here. And you'll need something to drill into here. Odds are you don't have a drill bit that's going to be that big. That's pretty big. However, if you can get a unibit or a step bit, I believe unibit is just a brand, but if you can get your hands on something like this, then you can drill a hole that big. And you can find out if it's gonna work just by doing that. That's the size that we need it to be. If you have a smaller step bit, you can try using that, but if this just falls over it, it's not gonna work. You gotta use a big one. Now you don't just start a step bit drilling into the metal. You need a pilot bit, pilot hole, whatever. You can see the outline right here of where this cover goes. This has that black plastic cover. I was thinking about putting it on here, but... Ten seconds later. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on here. Just out of simple simplicity. If you're gonna drill into metal, you need a pilot bit. 
if you're just drilling into plastic, you can just go straight with this. Obviously, I don't want it over these two breakers. You just have all this back here and it'd be touching this and causing problems. So I want to put it over here, over this hole. So I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to go for center of that section. Don't forget your safety glasses. There we go. This is what it's gonna look like. Boom. It's a thing of beauty. I almost forgot when. When do you wanna use this? There's really only one time you want to turn this off. And that's when it's in storage. If you hooked up to shore power, you wanna have it turned on so that you can charge the battery. Yes, you can just run off of the inverter. Or is it the converter? I always get those two mixed up. You can run off of the shore power feeding the 12 volt, but then your battery is not getting charged and it's just sitting here draining. There's no reason. Plus, the system is not made to run and do all the work. All the system is made to do is charge the battery and then the battery feeds the camper. People get away with it all the time, I know. It doesn't make it right. So if you're using the camper, you wanna leave it on. If you're towing the camper, you need to leave it on because you need charge the battery from your truck, assuming it's wired up to charge, but also more importantly, you need your emergency brakes to work. They run off the battery. If you turn it off while you're towing, you've got no emergency brakes. That's a DOT regulation. That's a really good idea. And that's just, it'd be stupid not to have them if you can have them. So basically you want this on all the time, unless the camera's being stored. And if it's being plugged in, if it's plugged in and being stored, you need to leave it on. Only when it's left in a parking lot or in a field for more than a couple days, that's when you turn it off. And take this with you if you want. I'll show a link or at least a picture. This was cheap. This was a very cheap piece. inexpensive piece. I'm not going to say it was cheap. So now, now that we've got it in the hole, run the nut on there. All that's doing is keeping it from flopping around and falling out. And it keeps this from spinning in the hole. You know, it keeps it from doing this. All right. Beautiful. Now that we have this mounted, all we gotta do is wire it up. And again, this is a very simple system. It's just a switch. Now when it comes to wiring this, it does not matter which terminal you use for which wire. You can have the battery on this side and then the camper on that side, or you can have the battery over here and the camper over here. It does not matter which one you use. Remember, all you're doing is just breaking the circuit. It doesn't matter if you break it here and this goes to the battery or if you break it here and this goes to the camper, to the system. All you're doing is breaking the system. So 
So, here we go. Nope, not that one. My tool situation is embarrassing in there. It's been so long since I've worked on that car that my tools are a complete mess. Put this nut back on so you don't lose it. Matter of fact, I should have put this one back on the battery too. We'll do that now. Pretend that's been there. So now I've got this off. Now again, this is the one that goes to the battery. It's going to go on either one of these terminals. I'm gonna put it on this one for no reason at all. Ooh, really? Okay. That's okay. Adapt and overcome. This eyelet, which is the one that was on the circuit breaker, the hole is too small to go over the post on that switch. So here's what we're gonna do about that. I'm grabbing one of the smaller step bits, and I'm gonna hog out that hole. Take that monster off. Use your brain, not your hand. You don't want your hand that close to that bit spinning around, cutting things, because it will cut your flesh like a meat grinder. And then you gotta go to the hospital, the emergency room visit. And if you're in a small town like this, they're gonna take you to back into the city. And you gotta explain to your insurance company what you were doing and why, and it gets ugly. So just use a pair of channel locks. That's a beautiful thing. Look at that. Step bits, they're amazing. Even the cheap ones from Harbor Freight. That's where this one came from. Got a three pack. I think it was like 15 bucks, 12 bucks. They're not the worst, they aren't the best ones, the Harbor Freight ones, but they're still pretty awesome. You saw it just saved me from a trip from the parts store. So now that goes on there. Put that on. Put the washer on. Put the nut on. So this one goes to the battery. Now, so this one fits on there. This is the fitting from whatever this cable was from. Now I know the switch is gonna be right here, right? But I also want to be able to pull the plastic cover off. So I'm gonna give it a little extra wire like that. This not only crimps, but it cuts. It's a beautiful tool. I love it. Now I suspect this is going to be too big for this to strip. Let's see. It is, but there's a way around it. You see how I'm just cutting around like that. What I'm actually doing is just slicing it all the way around, pull it off, and then boom, it's stripped. I knew there was a reason I was keeping that. Okay. So I want it like that. So I want to have this turned like that. And I'll show you why in a minute. <clears throat> Give it a light tug. You don't need to go crazy on it. 
but give it a light tug and make sure that it doesn't pop off. Now you see it's bent a little bit down like that, how it goes like, like that. Fixed. Now one minor but very important detail. Do not let any of these terminals, any of these wires, touch this post. Because if you're jumping for power from here to here, you're bypassing the circuit breaker and you are now unprotected. Okay, this is done. This is almost done. So now I will hook that to here, just like so. Split washer or lock washer, whatever you want to call it. And then the nut. Wait, there it is. You see, you don't need to put a whole bunch of torque on these. This is very small hardware. You saw I just snugged it down with my bare hand and really I don't I don't need to put much more on there. Just a little oomph. Just a little oomph. That's it. You don't need to go full full blast on there. I need to put this back on the camper. The wiring is done. Move this one go in. There we go. Now we'll slide the bucket back over here. Now, this is in the off position, and you'll notice there'll be no sparks. But if I turn it on, now all the stuff that's in there is taking and putting a load on it. That's amperage. So I can turn it back off, nothing. There we go. You don't even need to torque that down with a wrench. What I do, I use the wire as my leverage. I run that nut down as tight as I can with my fingers, and then I push here, and I push the nut with it. <clears throat> as tight. Oh, that needs a little bit. That's it. You don't need to use a tool. So, check this out. I just turned on this light. You see that it's off, right? Now it works. Now, the camper's turned off. That's literally all there is to it. Let me clean up my mess and we'll go inside to the grease board. I know this isn't the best drawing, but this kind of really does say exactly what we did and how easy it is, as far as electrically speaking. So this is a very poor representation of our camper. This is the battery, which is actually up here, but we got the negative that just goes and grounds to the frame. It actually grounded to the body, but it goes to the frame too. Then you got the positive wire, comes over and bolts up into that black plastic cover, which is where I mounted the switch, as you know. All we did, we cut a piece of that line out and hooked up a switch with the two posts. And we wired it like that. That is essentially all we did. I added some wire and changed some things around, but in the grand scheme of things, this is all we did. We just disconnected it and put this switch in place. And remember I said, you just turn that switch and all it is, is it is either connecting it or disconnecting it. You turn the switch and it goes down and it connects the red wire. Turn it back and it opens it up. That is as simple as it can be. 
and this job is actually electrically speaking is a very simple job and it is one that anybody can do if you found any of this information nice to have if you thought thought the step by step was easy and think you could do it then click like click subscribe do the bell icon thing tell your friends tell your family stop back next week three o'clock monday and hopefully i'll have another episode up also we've got a facebook page we love to camp with a k look it up we'll be the only one there it's not much going on over there yet but you can come and be one of the first guys to make things happen over there you can do questions q a you can give requests for programs what do you want to see what kind of how-to do you want to see what kind of uh, maintenance do you want to see give me ideas of what you want to see and we'll see if we can't make it happen so if we don't see you in the comments we'll see you in the campgrounds have a good one mm -hmm.